He is a consultant who uses the power of story to boost business results and help people feel human at work. A board member of the International Storytelling in Organizations Group, founder of Academy Historia, the first Russian storytelling consulting agency. Our speaker will help us discover ways to stay resilient in these changing times and accept the profession that is not changed by even the hardest storms. The professional human being, please welcome, known as Tim Mushin Makedonsky. Thank you so much, Andy. That was some great pronunciation of my surname. I, I rarely hear that. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. And uh, it's, it's a lovely day here. It's actually Easter in Russia. Uh, we are in a, in a kind of different church. So we're, we are really joyful. And I want to give you all the joy I have today with this session that I have for you. So just to check, if you see my slides, uh, put a plus into the chat. And by the way, I will be asking you to write something and I will be monitoring it over, your, over this speech. So please feel free to ask the questions and we will be uh, starting right off. So yeah, my name is Artem and uh, here's a short introduction. I basically help people achieve results uh, in communication with the power of the most human tool possible, the stories. And yes, I'm the board member and uh, yes, the surname is by the way real. The 70%, everything after this small thingy in the middle is actually a gift from my wife because I was originally Artom Mushin and she was Anne Makedonskaya, so we made a double surname on our wedding. So my son, who has also a double surname, will probably hate me for the rest of my life because he will be filling all these blanks and papers and it will not be fitting, so you can, you can feel it right now. So uh, this is just me and I'm here today with you to talk about how to become more resilient. And I, I don't want to be like some kind of a professional who knows everything. I just want to share one view that I have adapted for my life in, and in my profession. And um, this is basically about knowing what defines you. Because when you know what defines you, you get a deeper connection with everyone and you get meaningful connections and you live a better life. And like, obviously, clearly, Russians are not the type of people you go to when you talk about connections. Like, this is our prime minister here and the president on the right. So basically, not the, not the warmest people in the world, obviously. And yeah, it's just it's just us. I mean, when you when you Google grumpy Russians, you get this guy who has his own YouTube channel and he just posts pictures with different sites from all around the world. And you know it, the channel is actually called Grumpy Russian Traveler. This is just actually 99% of Russia here in one picture. So I, I'm not the kind of person who knows everything about empathy and connection. I'm just, you know, sharing my own perspective here. So uh, before we dive into this, I want to ask you one single question. So imagine you open a dictionary and you see your full name written out there in your picture. So what does the definition read? Put, put it to, to the chat, right to the chat. What would the definition read against your full name in a dictionary? It can be any dictionary. And while you're doing it, some time ago, I was in the conference and this top manager comes on stage and he says, I have three numbers that define me. And he says, three, 21, 3,000. And he says, then I have three kids. I have worked in this company for 21 years and I, and I have 3,000 employees. And I'm just sitting there and thinking to myself, well, I know a hell of a lot about this guy. I mean, I can really trust him with my working place. I mean, this guy can be there for me. I, I, I'm totally sure because of the second number. And because of the third number, I, I totally know his values. And I like, I trust him with my life. And I'm really engaged. And I mean, facts and figures that are, are good, but not good for everything. So just put to the chat whatever you would feel like to see in the dictionary against your own full name. And I'll read out a couple of versions. So I'll give you some time to do this. Light pink, hmm, interesting. Approachable, equality, great. Change agent, so this is what you do. Like, like what you do is who you are, who you are is what you do, great. Mohammed, thank you. A long life learner, natively not afraid to try something new. Hmm, interesting, some qualities there and some actions, lovely. All right, keep on putting them into this uh, chat, 
Ranjit, thank you for being adventurous. Wow, wow, I mean, great. Some great activities here, some great people. So let's just dive into one fun model that is actually very well known in, in the Western world with English speakers and decide what defines us really. So you will actually see which of your questions fit into which spaces of this model. Originally, it's called the Golden Circle, and it was first explained by Simon Sinek on the, his TED Talk, which was base, which basic premise was uh, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So basically, there are some things that define us, and I want to share with you one uh, simple truth I have discovered about this model while being able to speak Russian. So let's begin. I'll just jump over this model real quick for all of you who are not familiar with it. So. There are things we do that defines us. Like, I'm an explorer, I'm a researcher, I'm a thinker, writes Patrick. That's exactly what you do. I could say, I'm a trainer or I'm a storyteller. That's what I do. That totally defines me. That's all right. So on the deeper level, I can say, how am I different? How am I unique? So for example, I cannot be just some explorer. I could be a passionate explorer. Or I can be trusting life's adventures, not just rolling around adventuring. Or I could be the first member of an international community of storytellers in Russia. So this gives me a tiny bit of an advantage. But the basic premise is that we are too focused on these two levels. For example, this is actually the mission statement of one of the biggest companies in IT currently under the rule of Tim Cook. Just, you know, just read it out and uh, write to the chat one word on which you just stop paying attention because it's too way, way too big. Just, you know, Figure out where, where you're lazy enough to stop reading on this, on this actual mission statement. Revolutionizes, yeah, not, not, not <laughs> I mean, that's the second word there. Oh, come on, Apple. Oh, come on, the first one. You're killing me, guys. Okay, empower people. That's good. You've, 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 gone, you've gone far. Oh, bit. okay, yeah, so that's, that's the purpose. It's not bad to have, to have things that are what and how about you, but you need to dig deeper. And obviously, they have a why. So why do I do the things I do is actually the deepest level there is. And we had an original mission statement by Steve Jobs himself, which was to make a contribution to the world by making tools for the mind that advance humankind. This is not about creating some sort of a soft or a hardware. This is about changing something. But actually, there is a twist to this model. Because in Russian, the word why actually comes in two sim singular versions. We have two words, and you are in for a Russian lesson, uh, a lesson in Russian language. So we have a word pochimu and zachem. Let's break them down. I will not make this a school worthy le lesson, just bear with me. So we have two words, and you can already see there are similarities between them. I will highlight them for you. And you can, you can totally ignore the Y letter on the left in the pochimu, because if you can make a language where not only verbs, but also nouns change their form from time to time, and not even Russians can explain why they do it, why don't you do this kind of language? So that's, that's Russian there. So this middle part is chem. It sounds like chem, and it literally means what you do. It's a form of word what. So by creating these two syllables, Po on the left and za on the right, you create a totally different meaning. So let's break it down. When we write po chimu, like two separate words, we literally have by what. Like if I ask you, po chimu, did you drive here? You could answer like a specific route that took you to this place you are at. But on the other hand, when you write za chim, you literally get afterward. So it's like, za chim, are you going to the kitchen? to get some apple juice. It's basically after what you're going there. But the trick comes when you combine the words together because pochimu written together is the motive behind doing something. It's the reason. And zachem is the purpose. So let, let me just draw a quick example here. Here is me with my son building a bed. That was, that was a challenge. That was a totally different story. So if I asked my son, pochimu, did you bring me this apple? He would say, because I was hungry. So he gives me the motive. And then when I say, Zachem, did you bring me this apple? He says, Daddy, I want you to wash it so I can eat it. So he's talking about the future. Our language gave us a gift of distinguishing between future and the past, which is basically hidden in one word, why. 
And the trick, the coolest part here is that the pochimu creates the zachem. If you were hungry, you want to wash an apple. If you relived through something in your past, you feel like doing something in the future. So we have two different layers, one from the past and one from the future. And zachem is the future and pochimu is the past. I hope you're not, you know, you're still with me. You're bearing with me through this. So yeah, Andy, I see your height uh, summed up. That's great. So Pochimu creates the chem, but the coolest part is only to come. What creates Pochimu? There is the deepest level of being your true self. Because if I ask you, Pochimu, you do the things you do, like what motivates you? You could ask, answer something like, well, uh, I like treating people differently and I like educating them, which is a totally unique answer that gives me your motivation, but that doesn't quite land with me. Because it can be anything. It can be anything created from imagination. But when I ask you, where and when have I realized, have you realized that you need to do this, this thing? You give me a totally different answer. This is the missing question of this Simon Sinek's version of a model. Because when I ask you, not why you do the things you do, but where have you begun doing the things you do, you give me a totally different answer. And let me just demonstrate it real quick. So I could, answering the question of what and why you do, I could tell you, I am a professional storyteller. I have hosted more than 40 interviews with global storytellers from all around the world. I have hosted my own storytelling conference for free with 35 speakers and five days of pure content. And I have also starred on Russian television uh, and I have been in the news. And now you see that I'm a total douche because I'm just making big myself and, you know, I'm just, you know, this big guy. But then again, here I will try to ask, answer a different question. I will try to answer when and where have I realized that I need to do this. So I just want you to picture this man for a second. And this man is called Sergey. And I will toggle my presentation off for this short story. So several years ago, I was a bank employee. I was and educating people in soft skills in the bank. And eventually the bank got closed. And on the 25th of June, I didn't, I, I had a job. And on the 27th of June, two days later, I was fired with no savings because my son was born just, you know, half a year before that and nothing to do. I, I knew that, that storytelling was my like strong skill, but I had no idea how to earn money with it. I just, it, this was crazy. Like selling some, you know, iPhones in the 90s. The, the, nobody would buy that. So my friend invited me to a session. He said, okay, I need a facilitator. And you, you could come and treat these people and, you know, help me work with the teams. The price is not big. And I said, okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. So I went there for money. So there I come to the session and I realized there are like a hundred of entrepreneurs from all around the Russia and they need to do one thing. They need to present their project that they created to other people so that these other people take this project and develop it in separate regions. It's like presenting a project from New York. So somebody from Texas says, okay, this is great. We're going to do this or, you know, the same thing here. So this guy, Sergey, that I showed you before, he goes in front of us and says, okay, our project is a nine out of 10 project and 40,000 people go educated uh, every month and we educate entrepreneurs and we are the best in our region. Everyone's going to be so nobody's listening and it goes just like for 30 minutes. Over the course of, of the day, I come up to Sergey and say, okay, just tell me where and when have you thought of doing this? He says, no, I, that's not interesting, but stop it. And I say like, it's interesting for me, just tell me. And he says, okay, I had this fun experience. I was on a conference once with interpreters from Russia. And one of my friends also called uh, Sergey, he said, uh, I, got, I opened a cafe and I got closed in one month because the, the people living in this building were angry at me. And in Russia, I didn't know that. In Russia, people angry at a cafe, they are always right according to the law. So they got closed. And then my wife, another friend called Ilya, he opened uh, a bank account and he withdrew 80% in cash. And his account got frozen because in Russia, you're not allowed to do this. This sounds like craziness, but it's actually a law because you're, you have to protect the bank from withdrawing too much. And he couldn't operate for one whole month. 
And I thought, tells Sergey to me, I thought my friends are not idiots. They just didn't know how not to do this. So I decided to create a project to help entrepreneurs not think about how Russia wants them to operate, but actually do business and sleep well in the night, knowing that you will not be closed. So I went to the uh, government officials. We created a knowledge base for the entrepreneurs. And now we educate 40,000 people every month. Sergey has three cafe shops in his, house, in his hometown. And my friend Ilya, you guessed it, he opened a bank account for his mother-in-law because that's totally under the law in Russia. That's totally fine. He doesn't have any problems now and the family grows stronger together. So I say, why don't you tell this to people? And he just says, this is not interesting. And I, and I asked him, I, I made a bet. I said, Sergey, go up the stage and tell this. Just, just this, no numbers, no nothing, just this. So he goes up the stage and 100 people start listening, cheering, and come up to him and switch IDs and you know switch phone numbers after the meeting. And I just stand there like, oh my God, if I was able to do this like every day, I, I wouldn't even accept payment for this. I could pay myself to help people like him tell these amazing, great things because he connected in a way he couldn't before. And that invigorated me so much. So after reflecting on these tiny fractions of knowledge that I acquired and th these situations, I came up to a phrase that really resumes it for me. I really am a person who gives knowledge and confidence that you are able to show who you are through stories so that you, on the other hand, can feel that you are valued and your ideas are valuable to the other people around you. That's something I am. That's something I truly am. But just imagine for a second there, if I told you this exact words on the slide without telling this story before, would you believe me? Would you truly say that, yeah, like I believe this guy, I trust him with my gut feeling. It wouldn't work like that because we are humans. And I don't have the time to, you know, to get deeper into the brain science. You don't need it because you feel it already. And actually, uh, that's a funny thing. One friend of mine just yesterday, he sent me this picture from a project I did last week. This is me standing there looking at a person presenting her story. Just, this, is just, this is a summary of all my life and my career right there. So what I want to give you today is actually a way to discover your own why. Because if I ask you to tell your story, uh, some of you would probably say, I don't have a story in my life. I hear it like 90% of the time because we ask ourselves not the right questions. We are looking for stories. Instead, we should be looking for moments. So right now, I want you to leave everything, the phones, the computers, everything. Just look at the screen. Choose one question that you can see on the slide and stop for 30 seconds. Read it and just stay silent for 30 seconds. You can take a deep breath so your brain does the magic. If you have come up with one small memory, not a story, not a giant thing, just a small something, just like the story of Sergey that I told you, put a plus into the chat. And if you're doubting that you have something to tell and you're like, okay, I remembered something, but this is not story worthy. This is just, pff, it doesn't even compare. Throw these thoughts away. The most valuable thing about your story is that it is yours to tell. It is yours, it has happened to you. This is magic because we are not actually humans. We are brain, the gray matter, locked in this cell of bones and only touching the world outside of us with our feelings, our eyes, our ears, everything. And this is it, this is, this is we cannot experience reality as it is. It is experienced through our sensory systems. And when you tell a story, you dive into the place you will never reach otherwise, the inner core, the way other person perceives reality. This is magic. 
So I, I offer you this, these six questions. You will actually receive them in, in the PowerPoint, but you can make a screenshot right now and uh, save them to yourself and just reflect on them. These moments, when you're reflecting on them, they will become your stories. And if you're still doubting, if you still think that you're not living in an action movie and you're not an action movie character and you don't have stories in your life, let, let me just bring you this metaphor. When we're looking for stories, just like the one I told you, you're looking for sharp, beautiful diamonds, but in the place where people work with the shovel, they do not exist like this. They're not found in the nature like this. A story is something that is underground. It's a rough diamond. It's a memory that you clearly recognize and then you make meaning of it. You ask yourself, what does this tell people about me? What, what qualities of mine are there in this memory? So my offer for you is to look at your life as a set of memories and try and just witness them and ask yourself, what do they tell about me? And I have one gift for you because noticing these moments is really hard. It's hard work. And I mean it because have I told you this memory of Sergey because I'm a professional speaker? Well, kind of yes, but I couldn't have done it if I haven't noticed it in the first place. Noticing these diamonds is basically a trick of habit. And I have something for you to develop your habit. I have a chatbot. It's actually free and totally anonymous. No payment, no nothing. It just ultimately notifies you every day for five minutes in the evening. Take some time, stop and reflect what events happened to you today. These small events can later become your stories. And these stories can help you define who you are and tell what you do and why you do the things you do. So again, free and anonymous, that means I will only hear and see your name, your email probably, if you leave it there. And again, the number of stories you've logged in, just for statistics, just for fun. In, other, in all other accounts, it's totally free for you. So I just urge you to try and do this for five weeks straight. And as, a, as a, some kind of you know, a motivator, let me share something with you that I have found through uh, this, uh, this, using this bot over the cap last couple of weeks. So two weeks ago, me and my son went to the swimming pool. And it was a totally fun ride because he was enjoying it. He's two and a half years. His name is Kostya. And so he's like, yeah, just let's go, let's go, let's go there. And when we arrive at the swimming pool at the gym, he freezes because he understands that he has to go through the place where you wash your head and there's like music going on and a lot of naked men there, you know, just the regular kind of swimming pool. And he's just sitting there all stiff like this. And he's looking at the door. And I'm like, don't worry. The shower room is great. It's, it's, not, it's not scary. Don't worry, son. And he's like, he doesn't even listen. He just stares at me, stares at me deeply. And then I like, and I'm like, okay, what can I do now? How can I? And then I think to myself, okay, let's do a trick. And I ask my son, so Kostya, how do you think Alona, your trainer, who is teaching you how to swim, has she thrown the plastic fruits that you gather into this small basket into the water? Are they already swimming in the water, these small plastic fruits? And he, for, for a moment, he just unfreezes, looks into somewhere between me and the door into the space. And he says, yes. And then he's, a, and I'm like, what fruits are there? And he says, Oh, grapes, tomatoes, bananas, and every, and, and every word. In this moment of emotion, he basically runs all through this shower room without any tear in his eye. He's invigorated by this vision, and he drops into the swimming pool and swims for half an hour, and we have a lovely day afterwards. And then after this day, I, I, I sit in the evening and think to myself, what has happened today? And I remember this small moment, and then I think, okay, what does this teach me? And then at some point I realized how many top managers today actually talk about the shower room with their people instead of showing what fruits are floating in the swimming pool. How many leaders focus on that shower noise instead of creating a beautiful vision of a grape and tomato flowing in the water so that we can pursue. This is a small memory, but it can trigger a more human way to live our lives and communicate with people. 
So I urge you to do, use that bot or just write down your memories on a piece of paper for five minutes every day. And I promise you, you will see what you do and who you are better and you will communicate it better than any title you have and probably will have. So this is my gift for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and you can use it in Telegram. Andy, thank you so much for uh, sending a link, a link to the chats. I'm open to the questions, but uh, that's it for I've got for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Awesome. Let's uh, have a round of applause, please. Try. I think when uh, when we woke up this morning, we decided we're going to attend the D91 conference. Not many of us thought we'd learn some Russian words along the way. <laughs> so we appreciate that, not only learning the words, but learning the meaning behind the words. And, and I think we understand that so much of our lives and meaning behind the words is, is more important than what we may see black and white as just the words on, on the page. There is, the link is there. After the conference, um, the recordings, I would understand, would be made available to, uh, to the attendees uh, as well. We will have, we will have a Q&A, but there was something I just wanted to mention in, in line with, with the speech. There is a, a quote from Mark Twain, and, and, and the quote mentions two days, right? So two days in our lives. So the most important two days in our lives. Anybody want to throw into the chat what those most important two days in our lives will be? I'll give you one. The day we're born is one. What's the second most important day in our lives? Death? Okay. Anybody else? Not going to tell you. When? I know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? The day we're born and the day, the day we discover our purpose in life. Thank you, Akin. I think that's that kind of dovetails in perfect, perfectly to this, uh, to this speech. So I really appreciate your speech. Thank you so much for that, um, Tim. You're welcome. What we'll do now is I will hand over to my co MC, Ilaria, and Ilaria will be taking any questions. I think she's been busily looking at the questions that they've been coming in on the chat. So we have a few minutes where we can take questions and um, we'll address them. We we have a contest starting, supposed to start at 10 past the hour. So, but we're welcome to stay a little bit longer if there are more questions. Um, but if you'd like to leave for the contest, thank you. And uh, if you'd like to stay for more questions, please do. So I hand over to our co MC, Ilaria. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. And thank you very much, Tim, for your wonderful presentation. I don't see question, but I see a lot of praise for your genuine and authentic high energy presentation. And uh, I certainly would like to, to share also my praise for the way you came across. I do actually see a question now from Trangley, and he is, how do you deal with the story change? That's lovely. Um, if you if you haven't yeah if it's possible to listen to what stands behind this question I would love to clarify like what what does a story change mean for you or I could go from what you've put in the chat it's so strongly still here um, yes thank you very much um, Atom can you hear me yes yes, yes so um, sorry uh, it was a short question so what I meant by story change is that. Uh, like, um, for example, you uh, changed from uh, being an employee to uh, being, uh, uh, say, self-employed and, um, and um, a story gatherer as well, right? So I guess that um, your clients may have some something that they want to change their completely story like that. So um, how do you deal with that change? Mm, lovely, great question there. Um, that's actually a, a great question because it, it looks like a story change on, on the outset, but it's actually not, not like a story change because a story is an event from your life and the meaning you put into it. So the event from your life will never change. It's, it's just happened. It's there. It's, it's frozen. In, it's solid rock. But the meaning you put into it is different. So like, for example, in 10 years from now, while telling the story from about the entrepreneur Sergey, I could probably bring a different meaning to it. I would, I could probably say that interest in people could bring out the best in them, and that would be my like the thing that invigorates me in that moment of time. But 
th this 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 kind of story change is actual. But when we look at our lives, even when we're employed by an, um, an organization, we can still reflect on what drives our motivation further. So just this, lov this lovely question uh, from one of the workshops I had was, uh, imagine you're the best day you've lived and you are working out, walking out of the office and you were thinking to yourself, wow, I could have done that for free for that person. This moment of time is not gonna change but the meaning you put into it is going to change and it's going to define who you are. And by the way, if, since it's Easter in Russia, I love how religions all around the world, the religious texts have not changed for ages in most religions, even the newer or younger ones. But the way people interpret them really drives the understanding of religion and faith for, forward. And of the people interpreting them have uh, light in their heart the religion is light, even though the text is the same. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. And we have another question. What would you say is the biggest challenge to using stories in our professional lives mm -hmm. when data and hard facts seem to rule? Oh, lovely question. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, I think the biggest challenge there is the word story. Because when people hear this word, they instantly think that I'm either lying, telling a fairy tale, or throwing some you know, water out, not meaningless, meaningless sentences. So instead of using this word, I just prefer to use words, example, instance, event, episode, time of my life. And then I just, you know, I, 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 I see people constantly nagging about this moment when like how do how do i challenge them with this so what i do is i present myself just like i did to you today and i say 70 percent of my surname is actually from my wife and then i say so guys tell me why have we decided to do that why have we decided to do this change of surnames and like 70 percent of people say that i'm a weeb and i'm just you know I don't have a spine, so my wife is just, you know, this masculine piece of artwork. She's actually a, a fine piece of beauty, but not, ne not going there. So, and she just crushed my will and, you know, put a surname there. And actually, that's not it. I'm actually doing this to make it, uh, you know, to market myself. And I say, okay, have you thought of it yourself or do I have any control about it? And they say, look, well, you don't have any control. And I say, okay, now imagine I told you the story of how and when and where we have decided to do this change. Would I have more control? And instantly it changes. So it's the idea of appreciating the little things. So we have one more question, but it's a 30 second answer, I'm afraid, because we need to. 30 second uh, answer. Okay. It's high speed uh, do you have a high speed method of story development? I do. First, Find an event from your life. Second, ask yourself, what does it teach me? What does it change in my model of world? Third, ask yourself, who needs to hear that story? This is the easiest route because it brings out the best in you that you have and it gives it to the people who need your story right now. Fantastic. So I want to thank you very much. Wish you again happy Easter and invite you to join us for what will be a fantastic humorous contest. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much, everyone, and see you, everyone, in the main room for our contest.